Well, hi there, everybody. I thought it would be fun if we could do the creamy minestrone soup together. I know it took a little bit of time and we didn't really have enough time in our program today to do it together. So I thought we could do it virtually. That always works really well. And if you are watching this on the uh, YouTube video that I have, welcome. Uh, welcome to my show. We are going to be making a vegetarian minestrone soup. So to start off, I have put together some of my ingredients that we'll be using. I have my carrots here, my onion, celery, garlic, and my sweet potato. I'm saving my zucchini for later on because it cooks much more quickly than these others. So we'll be adding that in later on. So what I want to do is to begin, just prep these so that they're ready to go when I'm ready to start cooking. I have my pot on the stove here. We'll, we'll be cooking things up in that pot there. It's a nice Dutch oven size, just like this. This soup will make enough for about eight servings. So it's a nice big amount. Uh, you can freeze it and then thaw it when you're ready. I changed up the original recipe a little bit by making it creamy. And I'll explain that to you in a minute, but let me just get started with first things first, dicing my onion. Now, since we are going to be blending this up at the end, I don't need to make really tiny pieces, tiny dices of everything. So we will just be doing what I would call a rough chop of everything. But just to show you how I do that, I just took the skin off the outer covering of the the onion, the papery part, and I have a half here. What I like to do is take the top end and cut that off. And then I'm going to go down vertically into the onion, like so. So you can see here, but I didn't cut all the way through the root so that it stays together, except for maybe a couple of these pieces that fell out, that's okay. And I'm going to go through and cut horizontally through this way now to make things smaller so that when I go through again this way, I have nice uniform sized pieces of my onion. At the end, I just like to kind of chop the end pieces so that they're the same size as everything else. In the end, you'll be left with the root end of the onion. Uh, so I sometimes cut around that so I can get as much of that off as possible. So I don't have very much left to, and I won't uh, throw this out. I'll either compost it, or what I like to do is put it in the freezer until I have enough to make a broth. So, I'm just cutting those little pieces that fell out, make them a little bit smaller. Oh, it's making my eyes water. <laughs> okay, so I do have my half of my onion here now. Let me just grab, I'm gonna grab a few bowls right away so that once I chop these up, I can put them into the bowls and have them ready to go. There we go. And that was a rather large onion. So I don't think I'll do the whole onion, but I might do another quarter of it. So we'll, in total, it'll be three quarters of an onion. My eyes are tearing. What's your favorite way to keep your eyes from tearing when you're cutting up an onion? I find that if the onion is cold from the refrigerator, it tends to be less irritating but um, I don't tend to put my onions in the refrigerator. I store them outside. So that doesn't help me very much, does it? All right, so I'm just gonna cut this quarter just the same way I did the previous half. I'm gonna set the stem aside. And I love this little pastry scoop to just scoop everything up into my bowl here. All right, the next item on my list is carrots. 
about three carrots. I did peel these a little bit. I wasn't too concerned about how carefully I peeled them because they are organic. Organic carrots tend to be a lot cleaner than your conventional. I usually just give them a good scrubbing. I have a special designated scrubber for that purpose. All right. And, you know, I have just some little rounds here. I might, um, what I could have done is, because they are a little bit large, these rounds, I can go through and cut those in half again, make a stack of them and just kind of cut through them just to keep them small and have them, you know, the smaller the size, the quicker they will cook, which is nice. So I could do it this way and cut them, you know, so that they're all in half and kind of a uniform size. Let's see. All right, if that's good. Or another way to do that is to cut it down lengthwise. Just be careful of your hands when you're doing this. We don't want any cut fingers so that I have the halves just like that already. And then what I like to do is just cut through both halves at the same time. You use kind of a rocking motion with the knife to help with the cutting. It makes it go nicely and smoothly. And I curl my other hand under so that I don't accidentally hit my hand as I'm chopping. And I have a few, okay, these are from my garden, <laughs> but I had a few left over and I thought it would be nice to use them up. And I'm just gonna chop them up as well. They were small, but man, a very good flavor. Okay. All right. And I can put these right in the bowl with my onions because I'm going to be cooking them all together. Might not be conventionally the way you see. Usually you put the onions in and then you put the carrots in and put them in. All. I like to just put them all in at the same time. Um, and cook them up. Next is my celery. So I have two stalks of celery here. I'm going to chop them up at the same time. I just cut off the ends there. Again, the bottom half of the celery is wider. You can see right here. So I like to cut up along that bottom end right there. This one's not quite as wide, just a little bit, but when I chop it then, and again, I use the same rocking motion, kind of curl my fingers under. The idea is that the blade would glide along your knuckles before it cuts you, because your knuckles are up higher. All right, so I'm just chopping this all the way down. This is organic celery, it's organic carrots as well. And I'm just going to put that in a bowl as well. I'm going to be cooking these all up together, but I ran out of room out of that for in that first bowl. So here we go. So I now have my carrots, my onions, and my celery. I am now going to chop up a clove of garlic. This this clove came from my farm share. It is a nice big clove of garlic. Uh, and the way I like to chop up the garlic is, as you just saw, I take the side of uh, my wide uh, chef's blade and just pound down on it. The paper comes right off. And not only that, but the garlic clove itself has started to be crushed. So I can just go through and give it a, a rough chop. As I said, we don't have to worry about totally mincing it. And if you notice again, I'm rocking to chop it. All right. So I'm going to let that sit there for a moment. Now I'm going to put the garlic in last because I don't want the garlic to burn. And what's nice about that too, is it gives, once you chop the garlic, it begins to oxidize. And that's actually a good thing because the, the exposure to the air helps release some of the phytochemicals that make it so healthy for us. So it's it's actually good practice to just let it sit for a few minutes to um, start that process going. 
So while that's going, I'm going to turn on my burner and let my pot heat up. I have some olive oil here. I always like to cook with olive oil, the Italian side of me, but I also have uh, avocado oil that I use. So olive oil, avocado oil, uh, some people use coconut oil. Sometimes I use coconut oil if I want that flavor in the, the dish, but I'm used to olive oil. So that's what we're gonna use. So I'm letting this, my pot heat up a little bit. It's always a good idea to let your pot heat up first. Uh, if it's a nonstick, if it's a, a nonstick pan, then you really don't want to heat the, peat up, uh, the pot up without anything in it. But this is a steel um, all clad that I can heat it up and then I'll add my oil in and let that heat up. I probably put in about a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of oil in there. I'm going to let that heat up. While that's heating up a little bit, I'm going to take my sweet potato. Now, sometimes when I'm making a recipe, I don't peel a sweet potato, but because we are going to be blending this up at the end, I wanna take the skins off because that will affect the texture of the final soup. So I'm just peeling this now. And again, I'm gonna save these skins to make a stock out of when I have enough of my vegetable ends. All right, let me just add in my, this is my onions and my carrots. I'm gonna turn my heat down now to a medium. It goes on high. Add my celery. All right, and I'm going to grab my one of my bamboo stirred. And let that get started. Now, I'm gonna let that just start to sweat and start to soften. I'm just opening up my broth here because if I see that it's starting to burn on the bottom, I'll add a little bit of broth and that will help loosen up on the bottom and keep it from burning. All right, so. I'm gonna cut off the ends of my sweet potato here and that will go into making my stock as well. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can dice a sweet potato. I'm gonna cut mine in half just because it's big and long. And for this way, I'm going to cut it down the middle like so. All right, and then I'm going to Slice it down again. Be careful with your fingers if you do this this way. All right. So basically, I now have it in four slabs, all right? There we go. And then what I can do is cut down lengthwise again. So I have French fry shapes, all right? So cut it, like cottage fries shapes. Let me just check on my cooking over here. Where did I put my hair go? Wanna make sure everything's coated with that oil. All right, so now I have all of these French fry shapes. I'm going to turn, I'm going to drop my knife. I'm going to turn it sideways and then just cut through again so that I have a small, even sweet potato dice. Excellent. So that's one way that you can cut up your sweet potato. Just be very careful. It can be very difficult sometimes to cut through that thick of a vegetable. And they are kind of hard to cut through sometimes. Another way you can do this is instead of cutting lengthwise, you can go and make little rounds of the sweet potato like this. And then what I like to do is maybe stack two of them together and go down through in one direction twice, turn it 90 degrees and down through the other way. And guess what? 
there you have it. Some nice dice there too. So I'm finished that up and we will have our sweet potato done and we can add that into our mix that we are sauteing. Very good. All right, nicely done. All right, I'm gonna add that in. Okay. The idea is I wanna just start the um, onions and the carrots to start to brown and which is caramelizing it. So that means that the sugars are caramelizing, which brings out a little bit of the flavor. It makes it a different flavor in the finished product, in the finished soup. So I now have my initial vegetables browning. I'm gonna wait a little bit to put my onion in. While I am doing that, I can cut up my zucchini. Well, it might be a little early to um, cut that up. Let me just stir this up. By stirring it, that prevents things from burning as well. And I'm going to let this go for probably about five minutes just to kind of brown. Why don't we add the seasoning into it? It's nice to add the seasoning in to get it to cook with the vegetables because that helps the flavors mellow and blend. So let us add in, I have paprika here. I also have a little bit of allspice, a little bit unusual flavors. Kind of makes this uh, minestrone a little bit different than, than usual. I'm also going to add in a little bit of basil. All right, so to this recipe, I want to add in about a quarter teaspoon of allspice and a teaspoonful of my paprika. So I very conveniently have all of my measuring implements stored right behind me. I have my quarter teaspoon here for my allspice. And I have a half teaspoon here, so I'll use two of these to add my teaspoon in. And these flavors tend to blend really nicely. And I'm gonna add my basil in later on. Let me add in, I'm going to add in I have a low salt sodium uh, vegetable broth, so I'm going to add in a half teaspoon of salt right now. That will also help sweat the vegetable a little bit. And probably about an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. And to give a little heat, I'm going to add a little bit of red pepper flakes. So I'm adding, oh, maybe about an eighth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes as well. All right. Grab the basil so that we have that for later. Some homemade dried basil from my garden that we can use. Always so nice. All right, now let me give this a stir. And actually things are starting to brown on the bottom, so I think I will. Add a little bit of broth to that, to loosen up the brown bits on the bottom. All right. Well, you know what? I think we're doing well. So I think we can add in our broth right now and continue with the recipe. So what I'm going to do then is 
pour in four cups of my broth. I have a organic vegetable broth here. If you would like, you could use a chicken broth. If you don't want this to be vegetarian and you like the flavor of that chicken broth, that works well too. So I have that. I just want to make sure I don't forget. I always seem to forget like one ingredient when I'm doing these. Um, uh, I want to add in a bay leaf. So put that in. And I can add in, I add in my basil right now. Not just going to estimate. I'm going to give it a good pinch. I've got the whole leaves here. So I'm going to add in about a teaspoonful of my basil. It's probably about a half. It's amazing how it crushes down when you break it all up. All right. So I have that added. Oh, and I forgot to add my garlic. So guess what? I'm going to add my garlic in now. It would have been nice to add it in beforehand, but it will still add a wonderful flavor to that dish. See, I always forget something. I always seem some work out just fine. I'm going to turn this back up. It's on medium. I turned it down a little bit because it seemed like it was browning a little bit. All right. So now we have that in. Um, let me see. What else do I need to add? At this point, I'm going to add in I added in my potato, I added in my salt and pepper, my allspice, my paprika, my red pepper flakes, the bay leaf. I am going to add in a half cup of red lentils. All right, red lentils are great. They tend to cook more quickly than the traditional green or brown lentils. And um, they tend to fall apart into a soup. So that's what's going to help make this nice and creamy. Now, the original recipe calls for black beans. So you could use a can of black beans in this recipe as well. If you do that, you want to add the black beans later on because they will fall apart if they're, you know, boiling away for a while. And we're going to be simmering this for probably about an hour and a half. Um, and then we're going to test it and see if the vegetables are nice and soft. So at this point, I'm going to add in my red lentils, they are a lot smaller than your green lentils. They almost look like uh, little miniature split peas. So I'm gonna add that in and they're gonna cook up nice and soft while everything's cooking. So we have the beans, I'm sorry, the lentils added in, I added in my vegetable broth. And I need a can of diced tomatoes, which I forgot to pull out. So I'm just going to run around here and grab that. I always have a can of diced tomatoes in my pantry. Um, these happen to be organic. I get organic whenever I can, whenever it makes sense. Price wise, I like to. Um, buy things when they're in season so that organic is very close to the price of conventional. So I'm going to add in this whole can of diced tomatoes. All right, you can give that a stir. Oh, this is looking so good. All right, so what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to put a lid on this. I'm going to let it come to a simmer. I'm gonna turn it down as low as I can and I'm gonna let it cook for about an hour and a half. Hour, hour and a half. I'll check it after an hour just to see. But what I wanna see, actually, what I wanna do, I'm gonna add in my zucchini now. In the original recipe, I add it later because it is, uh, the recipe as it's written is a slow cook recipe. And uh, you can add the zucchini later on. But that's because in the original, I was going to tell you this, that's because in the original recipe, this was not a creamed soup. It's a chunky soup. And um, you don't want your zucchini to fall apart. 
But because we are doing this as a blended soup, I want my zucchini to be nice and soft. The reason I don't use the black beans though is because if I blend up the black beans, it's going to change the color of the soup. So it's nice to um, use the red lentils to keep the nice color in the soup. All right, so I am going to add this in. Pardon me. Go. I'm gonna let those cook. And that is our recipe up into this point. So I'm going to let this simmer and I will come back in a little while when it's done and show you what it is, what it's like to blend it up. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye for now. Well, welcome back. The soup is in cooking now for about an hour and a half. And I think it's just about ready to take off the stove and have a look. Oh, it smells delicious. Let me just tilt it up for you so you can take a look and see what it's looking like. So you can see it's a nice chunky soup right now. So originally the soup was supposed to be a chunky soup like this, as I was saying. But by switching in the lentils instead of the beans, I'm now going to take a stick blender. Grab my blender here. There we go. And blend it up. Now, if you don't have a stick blender, you can always use a, a regular blender and just scoop some out. You'll probably have to do it in several different batches. But with the stick blender, we're just going to stick this in and do just that. It acts like a blender. Now, if you want to keep it a little bit of chunky, you don't have to blend it all the way. I can show you what we have here so far. This is kind of a semi chunk. But what I'm going to do is go for real creamy soup. All right, so we now have a nice creamy soup. Let's take this blender off here and let me give it a little tilt so you can see. Now, you may find that you want it to be a little bit thinner. At this point, you could add in a little bit more vegetable broth to thin down the soup, thin down the mixture. But let's take a look and see what we've got here. So we've got a nice, smooth, creamy consistency. But the proof is really in the tasting, right? So let's take a little taste and see how we did. You may want to adjust it. Now, I didn't add more salt, so you may want to adjust more, more salt, more pepper. Mm. I might add a little bit more salt to this. Mm. But it's got a nice, nice, rich flavor. And it's made with all fall harvest foods. So wonderful treat, nice and warming as the weather gets cooler. I hope you get to try it. I hope you enjoy it. And um, let me know in the comment section below what you think. All right. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen.